and this is one of the, actually, this is a piece that I'm working on right now, which is, um, so you guys get a little bit of a preview into one of our upcoming articles, but uh, I think I think one of the upcoming sort of casualties of the rise of pre-sales is actually marketing, um, because people are becoming much less tolerant of the kind of content that marketing traditionally puts out. And people have been talking about this for a long time. This is just an evolution. This is just it coming into the B2B space, because in B2B software marketing, um, people still are intent on putting a lot of motion graphics and uh, and um, you know, sizzle into their pieces, and frankly, nobody cares. Nobody wants to hear it. What, uh, and and if you were to produce two videos, if you had one pre-sales guy uh, record his screen for ten minutes and do just a standard walkthrough, capturing every raw, every cough, every sniffle, every everything, okay, um, and post that, and then you had somebody um, spend forty thousand dollars on a marketing video with everything perfect, with the perfect voiceover and get the music and you get the, the actors and all, all of that kind of, uh, there's no comparison in which one is gonna get the, the greater engagement. The pre-sales guy is gonna win without, without even a, without even, it's not gonna be close yeah. between the two as far as who gets the engagement. So pre-sales motions, pre-sales discussions, pre-sales uh, content is what buyers want. Seems to be like even just in that example right there with having the more human or having the more, yeah, raw video. I suppose we talk a lot also on the, on the show about just the effectiveness of sales engineers being human and just being personable, particularly for those that are super technical. Um, just to kind of open up a little more in the effectiveness of that. But then even just in your example, just the fact that, or rather, when a person or when a prospect is able to connect with, uh, you know, a vendor or a person on a human or at a human connection your chances i'd imagine anyways of being able to close that person just skyrockets just due to the fact that you've bonded or connected with them more so than a perfectly curated uh, market i would i would i would uh i would say yes except that it depends on what that interaction is like simply uh, human interaction is not it, as a buyer um if buyers were craving human interaction just for the sake of human interaction, then they wouldn't be doing all of their research before they come to you, right? They really like to self-educate. It's not that they don't like human interaction per se, but they want the right kind. They want, they want high value human inter interaction. If I'm gonna go and talk to somebody who's at this organization, I want to make sure that, I, that they are making good use of my time. Does that make sense? So, uh, for instance, this is why you'll find, um, and, and tell me if, if you do not find this, but I, it seems to me uh, pretty common, that you'll find that by the time uh, you get a meeting as a pre-sales pre rep, uh, by the time you get a meeting with a prospect, they're not always particularly receptive to your discovery efforts, right? They've just gone through several human interactions that qualified them, and they really just want you to show them what they want to see, right? And this is uh, uh, kind of what you were talking about a little bit earlier. Um, so so what, it, it places a huge burden on us to make sure that those human interactions are high leverage, that they are sharp, human, uh, that they are sharp, that they give the prospect what they want uh, when they want it. Because, you know, if you launch in with, oh, you know, hey, let's let's chew the fat for a bit. Let's, uh, it, it's not that you can't establish rapport, but there's only so much. It's, it's, um, uh, it's, uh, like I say, it's sharp. Expect expectations are, are pretty sharp in this regard. And it, it's easy to put a foot wrong. Yeah. 